basically, hello. <laughs> I, I, I need to get out of the habit of saying basically as like the first time I like say something to people because like it's like a habit that I'm getting from this show that I fucking hate, but I hate watch, if that makes any sense. But there's like this skit in this show that I hate called Publicity and it's fucking hilarious. It's on the Crow show and like the way they talk makes me laugh. Um, so sometimes like you know how you'll be watching something and like the characters make you laugh by how they say some shit. You'll just be like dead as fuck <laughs> like you'll just be like oh my god i have to start saying it like this so anyways um how old am i i'm 24 uh i'm not really i'm um, trying to get any questions about myself right now um not to shade you um just saying like the conversation for today is the last episode of Real Housewives of Atlanta, which was episode 10, um, and the shit was a fucking mess, okay? Super motherfucking mess. Um, basically, uh, you know, when I started the episode, I was, like, excited for Portia. Can I tell you, like, I don't, I'm, I have not been a, a fan of Portia, and by fan, I mean, like, I really don't say any positive things about her, and it's not even, you like, I don't like her. I think that that's also, like, internalized massage in one ways, um, how, like, we just don't mention people on a fucking show. Like, everybody has a cast line, like, don't get me wrong, like, but we'd be like, oh, this is so boring, but it's like, everybody did something in the fucking show. So, um... So, but this, uh, but this episode, I was really happy for Portia. I was so happy for her. I was like, yes, get these coins. And I feel like, you know what? I feel like people want to talk shit, perhaps, about, um, you know, Portia being 32 and, like, living at home. But I think, like, in some ways, some of us who, like, don't have the privilege of, like, being, um, of having, like, par parental support, um, or having, like, parental, uh, you know, figures in our lives, period, um, I feel like, um, I feel like it was really, it was really positive for me to see her mom, like, pop up and be like, yo, come stay in my mansion and, like, fucking, you know, I'll make you food and I'll take care of you. Like, I feel like that was kind of bomb. I feel like in some ways, like, after a divorce, like, fuck it, after a bad breakup, like, when you love it, if, uh, cause, you know, honestly... I'm gonna say this. I be trying. I be trying not to say this, but I always think of Tina Knowles whenever I see um, Portia's mom. I'm like, that is Tina Knowles' sister, cousin's sister. Okay, because I'm just like that is that she is so like she came out of somebody else's like somebody else's Tina Knowles. Like I feel like Tina Knowles got a long lost aunt. You know what I mean? Like. Just, she's giving me Tina Knowles. I don't know if they're from the same lace front. I'm not sure what it is. But, like, they're just giving me similar tees. Um, but, anyways, I was just really happy for Portia when I saw that she was moving into this mansion. Um, but... Portia's mom, when she got on the counter, I was loving Portia's mom even more. I was like, yes, Miss Tina Knowles' sister. Cousin. Yes. I was feeling you. I was feeling it. I was loving it. Um, so... You know, that whole moment was everything, but I think um, Portia's brother, I feel like, was was kind of hating a little bit. Kind of hating a little bit. But it's also the part of the hair, too. Like, I feel like um, uh, uh, Portia's mom has, like, Tina Knowles bangs. Like, like old Tina Knowles. Older Tina Knowles. Because Tina Knowles just revamped her whole look. I don't know if y'all know this. Like, Tina Knowles done changed. This bitch is a chameleon. You know what I mean? Ch Tina Knowles, you know, she just molted and now she's a whole new bitch. And, like, you don't even know. Okay? That bitch will set you on fire. Okay? Because, honestly, like, like when I first seen Tina Knowles, she was always giving me like, like shade fever. Like she was always looking like she was about to shade a bitch. Like she literally looked like she always had something to say that would set everybody's pussy on fire. Like she looked like she know all the secrets. You feel me? Like she know everything. Like she just be, like she be sewing her dresses and she just be saying stuff. And niggas just be like. Miss Tina, you know what I mean? She just be giving me vibes. But now when I see Miss Tina, she's giving me poise teas, you know what I mean? She's giving me fucking skin weft realness, okay? It's like she upgraded from lace front to skin weft. Because honestly, like lace front, I can, I can tell a lace front from a mile away. I will be able to see the lace from 5,000 yards, okay? But a skin weft? Miss Knowles, okay? Miss Knowles, okay? I'm loving you, Miss Tina. But um, look at me. I'm over here talking about... I'm talking about fucking Tina Knowles. I'm giving Tina Knowles teas. I'm giving Tina Knowles props off of uh, this bitch mom. You feel me? Like, I'm telling you, that is Miss Tina Ken. That is part of the descendants of the Knowles. 
the sentence of the notes. But they fucking up right now, so that's why they ain't being, why we ain't finding out. But soon we're going to, oh, that's Beyonce cousin or Neon. Yes, third remove, third remove. Sure enough. You know what I mean? All this Cordell shit blow over. But I think the thing that's interesting about Portia's storyline is that, like, nobody really is here for her talking about Cordell. I think it's also because we already know that this nigga is wildin'. So, or rather, we've been knowing. So, her talking about she's been talking to him is kind of like, no, and I'm happy that her family was bugging about it too, because I was like, fuck that shit, fuck Cordell, fuck him, fuck him, fuck him, and I was, I was just really proud of, um, of homie for like, you know, getting that house and doing what they want to do for themselves, you know what I mean, that was positive for them, but I will say this, um, you know, Damn, you know, I think like, like no tea, no tea, this is not me hating on you, Portia, but like, you could have got you like a nice, something smaller, you know, something smaller, you know, I understand that she wanted to be grand, I'm not mad at you, but I mean like, people was legitimate when they was asking where the coins is coming from, because choils, you know what I mean, like, no tea, but, also pause, <clears throat> do we know? Do we know? Um, I heard that like Nicki Minaj is doing like uh like someone said that Nicki Minaj is starting in a fucking uh a movie. And then I found out that she is like literally the smallest cameo in the fucking movie. And it's just white fuckery. With just like uh Nicki Minaj in the background. I was like and it made me sad because it's like Nicki Minaj, Nicki Minaj is rich. Nicki Minaj is not worried about nothing, but she can't even get a motherfucking major role. They could have like if People will go see the motherfucking Nicki Minaj movie. I will go see this Nicki Minaj movie. I will go see it. And that's not me trying to be like a, a sneak disser and being like, I don't like Nicki Minaj, but I would see her movie. But it's like, I will really go see that shit. Like, that shit sounds entertaining to me. Shit, y'all trying to entertain folks? Get French Montana a fucking movie too while, while you're at it. Because that nigga's wild. I'm sorry, but French Montana is wild to me. Like, ever since he dressed like Mortal Kombat at the fucking uh, BET Awards a couple years ago, I've been checking for his ass, okay? I've been like, French Montana, what are you doing today? You know what I mean? He's silly. He's a silly person. Um, I don't know what it is. It's on Worldstar, though. So, I know some folks don't fuck with Worldstar, but just type in Nicki Minaj movie and Google, and you'll be able to find it. I did not stick around for the name, because it just looked like some bullshit. It looked like some, oh, we got Nicki Minaj in this movie. Like, Nicki's Barb's, Barb's gonna watch the shit, but they're gonna be annoyed, because they're gonna be like, where's Nicki? Where Nicki was? They're gonna be like, Nicki, please call back. Why was you only in, like, ten minutes? Like, honestly, like, I feel like that's what this, the Barb's is gonna be like, or maybe not. I don't know. The, the Barb's, honestly, the Barb's is probably just like the beehive, we'll be like, you know what, you slayed for them five minutes, Nikki. Five minutes, they don't owe you nothing. Oh, you saw French Montana live? I'm so fucking jealous. Damn. Anyways, um, getting back to Real Housewives of Atlanta. Let me stop from taking the shine. Um, so, I'm sorry. I'm just like... I try to do like a smoky lipstick effect and I just feel like it doesn't look like that. I just feel like it looks like I, my lips are just rubbed in dirt and I'm really sad about it. I feel like my shit took a turn. Um, exactly, sparkle, glow, and shine. Nikki's the token. I, I'm like, how, come on now. You know what I mean? And honestly, like, if we could just pause for one second and anchor man too, I was like making good. What the fuck? You know what I mean? I just didn't even get it. I was like, I didn't even know Megan Go was in that fucking movie to be real. That show was off my radar. I ended up going to see that movie by accident. It was just so terrible. I had a very horrible experience. I really don't want to take space and talk about it right now because it just like I wanna collect myself at another time. But that whole that Anchorman 2 is fucking filth. I walked out, and honestly, I wanted to get my money back for walking out, but I feel like I stayed for too long to to get my money back. I don't know if that's the case. Plus, it was like one of those places where you like eat and watch it. So, I think, you know, honestly, like at this point, I probably can't do anything about it. But the food was just nasty. Like it was the nastiest clam chowder. I like, I like, how do you fuck up clam chowder? And I could taste it. It was from a can. I was like, I could taste it. I could taste that nobody put no love in this chowder. Nobody went out to the sea and was like, let me get the clams. Let me make the chowder. That didn't happen. Okay. And the worst part about it is they definitely said they had a bread bowl on the menu. And bitch, when you tell me there's a bread bowl, that's what I feel like is I'm again. A bread bowl. A bowl of bread. A bowl of bread. The fucking bread of bowl? 
that I got was nasty, okay? I got bread of ball, okay? <laughs> that shit was just fucking, it was undercooked. And then they had my soup in an undercooked bread of ball. And I was just like, why? And I still tried to eat the chowder in the bowl, but I couldn't even eat, like literally it was dough, bitch. And I was feeling like Chef Ramsay. I was like, piss off. Like honestly, when I was, when I seen it, I was like, bloody hell, like, it's undercooked, you know what I mean? Oh, rubbish, like, I was getting angry, but I couldn't say nothing. That's what I'm saying, it wasn't even sourdough, though. It was just, like, regular bread, and they only toasted the top. I don't even want to talk about it no more. I'm, like, taking so much space right now for my Real Housewives review to talk about this nasty shit. So... Let me go in though. Um, oh, I have so many videos I wanna oh, I wanna do. Like I can't even explain. Like there's somebody that I watch um, that I I'm not gonna say their name because I'm not trying to summon no demons, bitch. No, but I like them um, a lot. But I I get annoyed. Actually, there's two people in particular who like literally put on black woman drag and like don't at all give a fuck about standing up for black women at all. And it just bugs me out. Because it's like, damn, you making up all your fame off a black lady. Off black women realness. And you don't even know what the fuck a black lady is. But it's like, you think you could just, you know what I mean? And that's how potent, like, these stereotypes are. They create motherfucking stars out of black men who fucking put on drag of black women. And it just sickens me. But look, let me move on. Let me just, let me talk about these carefree black girls. Um, or rather, not so carefree black girls right now on Real Housewives of Atlanta. Um, so... Let me see. Um, we just talked about Portia and getting that house and stuff positive. Um, but let me see. Um, obviously, I want to talk about Chuck Smith. Obviously, I want to talk about Chuck Smith. Um, but I think, you know what? I want to say this. I don't get why Nene acted like she didn't know Phaedra. Like, and part of me feels like, in retrospect, that it was just so that she could dog her out. Like, so she could just seem like... But then again, it really don't make no sense, because it's like, for... Like, Nene had so much hate for Candy and Phaedra when they both got on the show. And they both knew each other from back in the day. So a part of me feels like maybe, like, they wasn't cool. Maybe they ran with different cliques and shit. And maybe that's just what it is. Like, maybe when they got on the show, Nene was feeling like a original bitch. You feel me? I was first one holding the peach. So I don't know. Um, but, I, but now, like, with all this retrospect we have, I'm just like, what the fuck is the tea? It's just so juicy right now. Exactly. Nene always changing the script. Go ahead. Unique am. Yes, child. Yes. So, um, anyways, I just noticed that, um, that, like, you know, that's that's some real shit that's popping off. Uh, that Nene uh, did ha does no candy, does no Phaedra, and was shading them from the jump, both of them, and just recently got kind of cool with them, but not even really. So it just got me going like, you know what I mean? It got me wondering what happened, you know? Who farted in your pudding? You know what I mean? Who stepped on your Hot Pocket and then still gave it to you to eat? Like, I just don't know. Like, I'm just like, I just want to know what the tea is. I'm going to try to, like, do some snooping online and look into it. Because I'm sure shit is popping off now. Like, now that I'm wondering, I'm sure somebody already got receipts together. And it's all a matter of me going online. You know what I mean? I'm sure it's all a matter of me going to the right uh, Tumblr alley. You know what I mean? There's there's some place. Actually, you know what? The shit probably at motherfucking the Black Diagon Alley. Motherfucking... Uh, somewhere, motherfucker. <laughs> I'm sorry. I like love Harry Potter. Can I just say that I'm a very, I'm a Potter, uh, Harry Potter fan. So a lot of times I will talk about Harry Potter and or Disney. P.S. Like if you're just now coming o over here and seeing what's up with me, I do talk about Harry Potter shit a lot. So just I'm just clocking this about myself. Um, but moving forward. So Nene, I just didn't get it. Like. I just didn't get why Nene was um, causing so much shade. But honestly, I feel like, true story, I feel like Nene planned for this shit to go down. Like, I feel like Nene knew that Chuck was going to say some shit. I feel like it. Because I, I, I just, the whole vibe I got, you know? Oh my god, you with the Harry Potter world? I'm so fucking jealous of you. 
Javier and Blake. I'm so angry. Oh, you finally finished the, ser the series? Bitch, can I tell you? I've not, I have not finished the series. I've not watched the last movie or read the last book. It will never end for me, nigga. <laughs> I am still in it, bitch. And listen, when they when they make the book for the prequels, I'm going to read that bitch too so I can get some perspective. And then I can guess what the end is like. Don't ruin it for me. I don't know. So anyway, <laughs> I'm wilding, right? <laughs> so um, actually, hold on. So on, excuse me. I actually, I need to powder my nose. My nose is looking a little lackluster. I need to powder. So look, let's get back into it. Fucking uh, Nini. I feel like Nini was into it, honestly. Um, you feel like, see, someone just said uh, she's trying to make more plot lines for herself, though. I do agree. Because I feel like, as we've been saying, Nini really didn't have a lot going on this season. Like, we saw her talking about how her show got pushed back and, you know, how, how she don't really go to the grocery store. So it was an adventure for her. Just a lot of boring shit, to be real. But, um, you know, now, you know, she's apparently going to Athens. And I just feel like it's just so interesting. But I do feel like this was a setup. Because I feel like, honestly, there ain't no way in fucking hell... There's no way in fucking hell that, like, they didn't, like, that, I feel like, honestly, I feel like my niece told Nene, I'm gonna tell Charles. Charles gonna call you. We gonna go pick y'all up. Za, 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 za. Peace, I love pixies. Um, so, I just, I feel like there was a whole setup. But the thing that fucks me up about this is, like, my niece... Ill. You know what I mean? My nigga is ill to me. I just like, I side eyed her from the jump when she was over here talking about she don't understand what shade means. Bitch, how are you Nene's friend? Fuck out of here. It's just wilding me out. I just don't understand. Like, I'm just like, how are you cool with Nene? Y'all are supposedly like friends and all this shit, but like, you don't understand the lingo. And on national television, you trying to get quote unquote black lessons, quote unquote lessons in African American vernacular English, bitch, that don't mean mean nothing to you because that's not your fucking culture. Black is not monolithic, y'all. Some of the shit that some black folks do is not actually, like, some black folks' real life. That's why, like, ratchet culture is really, like, that's why, like, when people talk about their being ratchet and they're really, like, upper or middle class black folks, they're talking about some shit that they're doing that is, like, bad of black folks shit that makes black folks look black folks look bad so they do shit and they're like just being ratchet but they don't really think they're ratchet they just using that shit as a costume and it's anti-black as fuck because really what is usually said as ratchet is usually some resourceful or ghetto magic ass way of survival but niggas want to act like shit is so ahistorical and like niggas ain't still trying to fucking live out here like you know like self-esteem like self-esteem, souls, like those shits need building. Like that, like you can't just be, you can't just live out here and just feed yourself. Like first of all, this food that ain't really food, and then act like you know you gonna be okay. You're not gonna feel whole. You're gonna wanna put shit inside of yourself. A lot of people put things inside of themselves that they don't really want to put inside of themselves, but they'll put inside of themselves to fill some kind of hole. And that's not everybody, but there are a lot of people out here. Filling their cells with things that are not feeding them for real. That are not really giving to them for real. So I feel like in this in this uh, situation, I feel like my Nique, you know, is exploiting the fuck out of these black women who, who largely, like myself included, have taken, you know, words from like Latino drag culture and used them in our lives in order to like spice up things or make things seem a little bit more interesting. But I feel like, you know, in terms of Latino, like trans folks and drag queens and, you know, all folks of... <clears throat> I suppose like queer persuasion, persuasion who are Latino that did use the language and shit like that. That was part of a significant time in history where like drag folks was like out here like in the streets out here trying to survive, like dying in the streets, straight up dying to like really survive. And I feel like it's, I feel like much of the LGBTQ movement has been co-opted by white struggles, which are largely middle class. So you don't see, you know, the black drag queens out here struggling on the streets. You see RuPaul's Drag Race, you feel me? So it's like, we're really like, not shown the real intersections of shit, or rather the intersections of shit that's like really fucking horrible and harmful. We're showed the 
polished version that like you know is safe so i i think that with all those things in mind i feel like my nique is really just a detractor from the show she's like you know likening herself to white to a white woman saying she's white seeming and honestly the other woman clocking it as well and i don't think that it's not problematic because it is i think that like a black woman like definitely calling themselves a white woman in a black woman's body is very saddening but I think that there's also I think and I haven't really gotten into this so I don't know if like this is like full of shit or if like this is like some real shit but I have heard of like uh trans ethnic in terms of like folks like being adopted by white folks like like brown folks being adopted by white folks and um assimilating or trying to assimilate to white culture um, to a point to where they say that they don't feel black. But I, I, I revel that to say, what is blackness? What is blackness that you got to feel? Like, I just don't get it. Like, you are black. Like, my Nick is light-skinned as fuck, but she is not white. Like, so that's the thing. You know what I mean? Like, and I realize these white-passing folks or white-seeming folks, y'all feel like y'all are fitting in, but what we see, y'all, I feel like that's what, I feel like that's the thing about white-passing folks and, like, their politics. People of color see y'all. You know what I mean? As much as y'all can assimilate and blend we see y'all. So I feel like when y'all do fucked up shit and y'all get called out, y'all be so shocked. And I feel like that's what it is. And I feel like that shockedness is just like whiteness bullshit. It's just like this civility shit where we're supposed to not call each other out. Because I think call out culture has been like largely demonized um, even though silence is so prevalent. So not being able to say these things about this person is a problem. But then when you say something about these things, it's an even bigger problem, which means it's circular as fuck and we don't get nowhere. So um, you know, uh, I, I think it's just wild to me. You know, my Nick is moving around in the space like a white lady, you know, very much so. You know, calling out the black ladies who was super into her man. Bitch! You feel me? You see how the scallywag be? You know what I mean? My Nick, like, that's some white lady shit. Like, white people be doing shit like that. All, all these people, you know what I mean? Who's doing stuff like that? You know what I mean? That's wild. Like, that was just, like, that just seemed very, like, weird to me that, like, my Nick, like, or rather, that's privileged people shit. Because, like, my Nick really thought that she was going to sit in the conversation and just be talking about folks. And I feel like she got checked the fuck by Phaedra because she was like, we will not be playing. You don't know me. And that's real. Don't try to be mad. Making no little jokes, hee hee ha ha. You don't know me, bitch. You know what I mean? You not holding the peach. You feel me? Like damn, like fans are like, oh, big, big. You know what I mean? Back up. You know what I mean? So <clears throat> I feel like my Nick needs to learn, uh, perhaps like to fucking wow, like assess herself in the situation and really get some kind of fucking idea. Um. Yes, exactly. They got these white folks fooled at times. Yes, sparkle, glow, and shine. You have said it all. They have these white folks. But white folks be fooled as fuck by these white passing folks. You know what I mean? But people of color, especially black folks, be knowing. And we be seeing you. You know what I mean? Like, uh, motherfucking um, Rashida Jones. Rashida Jones, white passing ass. Stay right and uh, wrote, a damn, uh, wrote a movie about her fucking life. Wrote a movie about her fucking life. And basically whitewashed herself, basically made herself out to be white and like, you know, uh, wrote all, all white characters, you know what I mean? It's just very strange to me, you know what I mean? So again, I, I think it's just wild how, you know, how white passing folks be running for the, from their blackness and be trying to find it in fucked up ways or be trying to access it in fucked up ways. And I feel like that's why my Nick was bugging, trying to read folks at the table, trying to come for folks. I just didn't, I wasn't really feeling that. She didn't say anything for a minute until Portia said something at the table. Exactly, exactly. She, and the thing is, I feel like, here's the thing. I feel like my, in that moment, my Nick was like picking her fucking prey. And that's what I feel like. I feel like my Nick's not stupid. My Nick knows she's not coming for nobody else, but she'll come for Portia because they don't got no alliance with Portia. You could tell that shit from, from, from the whole shit. You know what I mean? You could tell from watching the show. Portia is not in the clique. They trying it with her because she's going through some real shit. But they don't really fuck with her like that. And that's why my Nick came at her like that. My Nick was like my Nick is a weak ass dog. And you could tell when the weak dog bite 
you know, who the weak dog think is the weaker dog. You know what I mean? My Nick is just a weak dog. And like, and you and you just, I just saw a lot from that, from that one scene. I was like, oh, my Nick, you trying it. And the fuck that part was, my Nick was already trying it by trying to talk about her husband, little stanky dick ass, uh, talking about somebody else. It's like, look, I get it. Your, your wife is about to be on this show, but like, why the fuck? Like, I don't know what the fuck kind of conversations y'all be having at night that involves her and y'all being like, you know, it would be good for, for me to just, you know, talk about our relationship and how, you know, how their, how y'all, your relationship with them at one point in time coincided with, uh, me and no way. You know what I mean? Like, that's basically what, what she did. She was like, oh, like, didn't y'all date before, like, we even knew each other? Like, who cares, bitch? He probably had a fucking fart, too. You know what I mean? He probably farted in 2000 fucking two. Was y'all together then? How would you know? Why does it, does it affect you, bitch? This is not the butterfly effect. You know what I mean? I'm just, I wasn't sure what was going on. Um, and I just thought Kenya was being so creepy, like just being all up in the mix. And I'm like, Kenya, is it really that serious? Is it really that serious? I didn't think it was that serious, but I, I will say this. I thought Candy, Candy, sorry. I thought Candy giving the tea about him, you know, being cool with, uh, her mom and, um, paying credit card bills. And then Chuck even saying that, like, uh, Candy mom and Candy aunts was like cooking food and being nice to him and he was lying to Candy. That shit made me sick. I was just like, uh, like, like Chuck Smith is like the nastiest motherfucker. Like to blatantly say like so like carelessly and so evil, like so cruelly to say that like he straight up lied to Candy that like she wasn't like his girlfriend at any time despite her being like, yeah, we dated like all the symptoms of dating. You know what I mean? I've dated somebody. They've given me money for my credit cards, nigga. Let me tell you, we was together. I don't know nobody out here that's giving you money for credit cards and y'all not together. You know what I mean? That sound like bullshit on key on Chuck's side. I'm over here about to call his ass Keith. He's making me so damn mad. I don't even want to say Chuck no more. Because I know a Chuck and I like a Chuck. But I don't like this motherfucker Chuck right here. No, that whole scene was mad uncomfortable. It was just blatant. It was blatant massage noir. It was blatant massage noir. He was talking about some being a young, successful millionaire and just being out here talking about that that uh, Phaedra was part of a team. Ew. You're fucking nasty, nigga. Like, that's the nastiest shit ever. Like, fuck. Like, I get, like, I get being in a poly, uh, a polyamorous situation where, like, you have multiple relationships with folks, different degrees of relationships with folks, and that's real. But that shit involves, like, y'all partners, you, 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 they know. They know. There's consent. There's, like, conversations about shit. It's not just, like, you paying credit card bills and you just fucking bitches and getting they, they aunts and they mama to make you food. Talking about the food almost swept him off his feet. That makes me so sick. That makes me so fucking sick. Oh my god, Chuck Smith is nasty. But I did want to say, I just felt like Funky Dineva just didn't even go in on Chuck. And I feel like, again, when these people... And this is, this is also some, like, black capitalist shit. When you get too close to the to the money, when the money is, like, that's the main shit, your objectivity is gone. You know what I mean? It's like, damn. It's like, and I'm not saying, like, you know, because, you know, Funky Dineva is, like, close to the people in the cast um, that, like, he can't go in, but, like, he can't go in. And I think that the thing that really sucks is, like, he could have he could have went in for black women, but he didn't. He chose to, like, really just take this, like, really, like, quick trip on, like, calling him a fuck-ass nigga making fun of his clothes you know what I mean but not not going in at his motherfucking like straight up con morals like his straight up fucking real like self you know what I mean and that's what, what accountability is accountability is going at the fucking structural systems of oppression and being real and like Honestly, like, I think the, the thing that fucks me up is, like, the juxtaposition of all the editing of this, of this whole shit. He, like, came up like he was cool. All, the women were both poised and ready to have the conversation about what the fuck went down in Savannah. They were ready to have the conversation. It was uncomfortable, but they were like, I mean, if you want to go there. 
But no, wind and dined them. Invited them out to speak at the Boys and Girls Club in their hometown. You know what I mean? Made them feel comfortable. Made them feel like everything was on the table. Like, I'm excited to be working with y'all. You know, za 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 za. But it almost feels like my Nick needed Chuck like a guard dog. You know what I mean? Like, my Nick's little white semen ass was using the black man to check these black bitches. And that's what I didn't like. And I, I, I remember, like, earlier today, I saw, like, one of my Facebook friends posted, like, what do y'all think? Do y'all believe Phaedra? Do you think that Phaedra and Chuck dated or was she, or or she or was like Chuck just lying to his wife? And it's like, why do we not believe that Phaedra dated Chuck? You know what I mean? Why do we not believe that? You know what I mean? And then somebody went so far as to say that like they thought Candy was a slut when they were younger. And I was like, what the fuck? I'm like, who the fuck says that? You know, people need to check themselves. What the fuck is a slut? Like, explain yourself. What the fuck is a slut? Somebody out here who's having sex more than you? Somebody out here that's having sex with multiple folks? How is that really, how are you focused on that? You know? So that really bothered me that I read that shit. Because, like, slut shaming is not cool. I want, I want, I want this to be fucking known right now. I want this to be known right now. You can fuck anybody you want to fuck at any time as long as they're consenting as long as obviously because that's what fucking is as long as like you and your partners are consenting to your relationship and you know that's really fucking it you know I, there's really no and you know you go for it you know you fucking go for it you know you fuck until you can't fuck no more you know you enjoy the fuck love the fuck you know fuck yourself Fuck yourself sometimes. Buy toys if you can afford them. And if you can't, you know, watch some YouTube videos. I've seen some wild stuff on there. Okay? Maybe I shouldn't be saying that right now. <laughs> but, like, it's real. You know what I mean? Fuck yourself, though. Seriously. Like, enjoy your body. Enjoy it in all the ways that you fucking can. Um, you know? And, and like, fuck anybody who would hate on that. Fuck anybody who's hating on you getting your nut, bitch. Fuck. It's like, damn, even if you, even if Candy was fucking every nigga everywhere, it don't change the fact that Chuck lying to my Neek, oh, basic ass. Because my Neek is probably the most basicest type of person. And from the way that she moves, she's probably the type to be mad that Chuck fucked with a black woman that wasn't fucking mixed. No tea. Like, I feel like her, her insecurity is with the fact that, like, that, like, she probably has bought the fucking notion that she's not really black. And that all the black women that, like, you know, that Chuck fucked, oh, man, she's got to stand up to that. Oh, geez. No, bitch. You, you yourself. You know what I mean? Enjoy yourself. You know what I mean? Chuck chose you, bitch. Whatever the fuck that means. That nigga's nasty as fuck. I don't even care. But it's like, you know, um... Fuck, he's a fucking dog. That nigga is nasty as hell. And it just bugs me out because, like, I love Funky Daniva, but I just feel like they could have went the fuck in, and they didn't. And I just think it's interesting that, like, you know, I'm not sure if, like, Funky Daniva is a trans person. I know that they're a gay person, but I'm pretty sure that they only wear the wigs and the lipstick and talk in the African-American vernacular English just because, you know, that's what gets them the viewership that they have. Because black ladies are fucking awesome! Because black women are the shit. You feel me? People will go out of their way to look like us and try to be us and they not. You feel me? Because black ladies are the fucking shit. That's what it is. But the thing is, because, like, we are seen uh, through such a white lens, white people will watch, black people will watch the fuck out of a black man pretend to be a black lady. And that's what the fuck it is. Um, But I don't know, like... Bitch, <laughs> you see me? I be yelling like, fuck out of here. Exactly, I feel like my Nick is a fucking hater. I feel like my Nick is mad that like Chuck was out here with these like fucking fabulous ass millionaire ass ladies just doing them and fucking having their dreams. Like damn, like honestly, like all I see Candy and Phaedra do is grind. And I'm sitting here like, y'all really care if like this basic scallywag nigga like is fucking lying on folks? Veet, veet. Like, nigga, we don't got time for the storyline. Okay, Portia just got a house. Phaedra about to fucking embalm somebody, you know? Nene about to whatever. You know, Kenya look like 
she cooking up something with Lawrence. And honestly, can I just say, Lawrence, what happened to your motherfucking deal? I was looking for the Lawrence CD. I'm kind of mad. Like, what's, what's, what's the tea? Candy, like, can I get a fucking Miss Lawrence CD? And can fucking Derek J feature? Because I feel like Derek J could just give me something. I feel like Derek J is going to come out with a fucking song. I swear to God. I feel it in my bones. Like, Derek J is going to come out with a song and it's going to be the hottest shit. Oh, my God. I'm so hype. I'm hype about that shit. Mm. Uh. Mm-mm-mm. Mm. 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 Yeah, I don't know. I love Miss Lawrence. I love Derek J. But I was dead also when... Okay, I feel like Mama Joyce is now getting into, like, more wild territory. Can we just talk about Miss Miss Joyce, uh, Candy Mama? Uh, Candy Mama is bugging me out. I'm just like, Miss Joyce, like, I get it. Like, at first, you tried to lie on karma. At first, you tried to lie on karma. But, like, now, you know... And then you try to fight karma. They try to fight karma. But then, but then now, you're talking about you went to the hospital and you can't afford to be meddling in Candy's affairs. Like, do you hear yourself? Mama Joyce. Candy mama need to go. Derek J rubs you the wrong way. I think Derek J is an apologist, motherfucker. Because I remember when they was trying to get Kim together for talking to Sweetie any old way. He was just, like, trying to be nice, nasty about it. So I was like, okay, queen. Because it's like, you know what? I feel like Derek J being Kim House talking to Sweetie any old way, too. Because I feel like, again, that black capitalist shit. Once you get a little bit of money, niggas be feeling like they super niggas. And they be acting like they could do any old motherfucking thing. But let your ass lo lose that money. And let your ass be around some white folks that ain't happy having it i'm telling you i'm telling you like i have been in so many situations where like white folks was like mm, this nigga doing too good i literally had white folks try to take shit from me and take shit from me i've had that happen to me so i'm not gonna sit here and act like um you know that's that's not something that could be going on because i feel like you know kim was having a you know Derek j Whatever the fuck he was doing to them wigs, he sure wasn't styling them on her. And if he was, he deserves to be fucking fired. Whoever the... Because I don't know if Kim is doing it herself these days or what. But whatever the fuck Kim was doing with these fucking wigs um, was not working. That leave out was, was trash. Um, but listen, I'm always here. Like, I, I'm not trying to be shady, but like... If you're a white lady and I see you with a lace front and it looks a mess, I'm going to say something to you because you shouldn't have fucking did it in the first place. But second, if it looks bad, I'm going to be extra mad. Um, yes, just, just Nicole. Yes, a white man stole my video off YouTube. A white man stole my video off YouTube and copied it word for motherfucking word and was reading it off a script. A white person took my house. A white person took my home. Like, can I tell you that? So, like, white people have stolen from me. Like, on a historical level. On a historical level, okay? So, let me not play like these white folks won't take some shit from you. But at the same time, um, you know, that, that shit just worries me about these black folks that got all this money. Because you literally one white person away <laughs> from not even getting your coins. Oh, my God. So, um... Let me get into it, though. Uh, Mama Joyce, you are giving me too much. I love you, Mama Joyce. I love you so much. But, like, you, you, you need to stop. Like, you need to stop. Like, I'm just, like, not sure who is, like, like what the fuck. And I remember watching Funky Dineva talking about that Miss Joyce got a boo-boo. Um... Uh, that's like this this younger or older light skinned gentleman or something like that. So I don't know. I just feel like Miss Joyce is doing all these fucking tricks. I feel like Miss Joyce is like literally two episodes away from faking her own death and going to motherfucking uh uh Fort Lauderdale or some shit like dead ass. Okay, so the person who stole my video, I'm gonna put my link right here. It's actually a white man stole. It's actually a white man stole from me. <laughs> Oh, uh, uh, let me see. Oh, yes, it's right at the top of the screen, girl. Oh, yes, it has 16,000 views. I am kind of dead about that. I didn't even know I had that many motherfucking views. 
That's hey, comedy. Up? I'm dead that I'm putting this back out there for people to see. All right, well, <laughs> I forgot like that. I forgot this even happened, but I'm dead again. Um, okay, here it is. There's the link. Uh, I'm this girl said in the chat. Um, mm, 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 blackness is not a feeling, just like fat is not a feeling. Yes, Victoria Casey. Yes, yes, Victoria Casey. I fucking love you, bitch. Um. Mmm, Kai Train. Yeah, I I think you know I think that's interesting that you thought that um that that you didn't think Phaedra would be on, that Nini didn't think Phaedra would be on the show that long, so she didn't acknowledge her. But I feel like she did the same thing with Candy. I think that she was like treating Candy like kind of bad, and I think she thought Candy was gonna just dip off the show. But Candy out here getting them coins, bitch. Nah. <laughs> True story, yo. Victoria Casey. White people are always stealing. It's fucked up. White people are thieves. And that's the thing that's fucked up is like, you know, these thieving ass white folks out here that be stealing and be taking from folks. It's just like, it's a shame. But it's like, at the same time, it's the reality for these black actors out here, these black famous uh, folks out here that be sitting comfortable, be sitting comfy cozy until they fuck it up and they ain't got no coins. And then they can't, then they can talk all the shit they want then. But then usually they get labeled as a crazy stan or fan or some shit. Like, that's not ableist as fuck. But anyways, um... Moving on. Um, I just thought that Chuck Smith is, is a fucking... Chuck Smith is a fucking scumbag. Like, point blank, end of fucking story. He's a scumbag. I think my Nick is a fucking scumbag, too. Because it's like, bitch, where were you for this episode? Like, you're supposed to be one of the fucking new housewives, right, bitch? You absent like a mug! Get out. And um, I just I just wasn't here for it. Um, and I just... I feel like... I feel like Nene... Like, Nene's face, like, when Chuck was talking was just like disgusted and I was like yeah bitch that's your friend you know what I mean I was just like you invited him you or rather like you invited him into the show and shit you invited him into the everybody life like ew you know what I mean ew Nene gross it just made me sick it's like this is the second week in a row where I'm sitting here like Nene what the fuck uh just over it hated it um and I thought that um I thought that Kenya was just doing the most as per usual. I think like she was trying to like make a mountain out of a molehill with fucking Phaedra again. I'm like, bitch, you have no storyline. Fuck. At least Portia got some dogs. You feel me? At, at least Portia like was like, you know what? Let's go get these dogs some motherfucking church clothes. I was like, yes, Portia, get the dogs some po fucking church clothes. I was here for that shit. I love Portia. Portia's my favorite one in the whole shit. Honestly, low key, I always stand for Portia. Kind of, I feel like because like even though I never, even though sometimes I wouldn't talk about her, I think I was not talking about her because like she was going through some domestic abuse type shit, and I didn't want to be one of those people who's just standing by being like, oh my god, this domestic abuse i was like mm, that's fucking evil you know what i mean but the shit that fucked me up was like you know i always like i i think in some ways like i kind of admired like all of like the fancy clothes you know what i mean i think like that's um i think like being fat like there i realized like one of the things that annoys me about fatness or rather not fatness, things that annoy me about our society is that there's not enough clothing options. So I feel like sometimes I'll be lusting after shit that's like a fucking double zero and shit. I'd be like really like, oh, if only this was my size, you know what I mean? I'd be having like these fucking feelings. So it's like when I was seeing her getting dressed up in all these like Cinderella-esque ball gowns, darling, I was like into it, okay? I was like, mm, okay. And I was just thinking it was perfect. And then also, like, Marlo. Everybody's in the comments right now talking about Marlo's coming back next season. I, I, I thought Marlo was fabulous, too. I really liked all of her outfits and all of her, you know, her fabulousness. I thought it was fabulous. And I was just super there for it. Um, but, I don't know. I feel like Phaedra um, and Candy, you know, they're fabulous. And they, like, they work really fucking hard. And I just feel like this whole Chuck Smith shit is just a detraction. And it's like, what the fuck? It's like, I love this show, kind of. Like, I just love seeing black women, like, looking fabulous and just, you know, and not looking fabulous. Sometimes they don't look fabulous. And that's reality, you know what I mean? That's reality, you know? Fuck out of here. You know, but um, but sometimes, you know, when they're looking extra fucking fabulous, they're, extra, they're looking the sickening and everything like that, that's fucking bomb. And then when they talk about their real life situations, that's real. 
Um, I was really here for the puppies, though. Those puppies were so fucking cute. I was, like, almost crying because, like, I want a little puppy so bad. I should not have animals, though, but I want one. Um, but anyways, I wonder if I got, like, a little baby puppy, if I could, like, pretend it was a baby. Oh, my God. <laughs> I need to calm down, like, because I would be one of those people. Like, I need to calm down, though, because I really don't even need a fucking dog. Like, I need to chill. Um, but I, I would, I think Marlo being a regular would be cool. I will be interested, but I think like, honestly, again, this Chuck Smith shit just took me off and it made me mad because it was like, it, it just like shows how many fucking, um, it just shows how many people are against like black women. You know what I mean? Like how many people like literally were like just talking about how they don't think they just telling the truth. Like there's like, why? You know what I mean? I was like, why don't we believe Phaedra? Why? You know what I mean? No one has good reasons. Everyone was just saying slut shaming ass shit, talking about they're freaky. They're freaky women. They're freaky because they talk about their sex life? That's real. That's real. People fuck. You know what I mean? It just fucks me up. Like, how many people are like, how, how many people think that, like, people don't have a sexuality as long as they don't talk about it? You know what I mean? And as soon as you start talking about your sexuality, that's when you have one. It's just like ludicrous as fuck. People are fucking out here. People are having sexuality, sexual identity, you know what I mean, they don't need to keep talking, um, but, you know what, I think, you know, I think, uh, Copper 04, I think BGC fans wanted more black folks on their Circa Tanisha, because I think that, like, the BGC fans are fucking wildin', like, mo like, no team, but, like, most of the BGC fans are, like, younger folks who are just, like, who think, like, the fighting is justified. Like, who are just, like, who think, like, a show that just glorifies violence against women is, like, cool. Like, that's a cool show. And, like, now that they have, like, this uh, all-star shit is just whack. Yo, Javier Timberlake, yo, for real. Mo that motherfucker really did take my fucking, uh, my video and just really tried me. Tried to be me. And that's the thing. White people love to, like, black women are the most copied. They like to say black men are the most copied. Black men copy black women. Black gay men copy black women. Are you kidding? You know what I mean? A lot of the black Latino drag culture comes from the emulation of black fucking women. You feel me? They be pulling shit from black women that they know and be making it big, making it pop. You know what I mean? Because of their privilege. You know what I mean? But then, like, when black women use it, it just gets taken by white women, like, hard, or gets taken harder by white gay men. It's just a mess, but, ow. <laughs> Anyways, um, but no, like, we were, we're having, like, a good time, you know, talking. I really enjoy all of y'all. I just wanted to say, um, Bountiful Bettys, what up? Javier Timberlake, how you is? Queen Sertel. Hi there. Last couple seasons of BGC are the, were the worst. I do agree. I do agree. Listen, before we get into BGC, because I can talk about BGC, I'm going to pause on the Real Housewives of Atlanta. Let's just, like, go in. Oh, wait, hold on. Let me just finish up with Kenya, though. Let me just finish up with Kenya. Okay. Exactly, exactly, Bountiful Betty's, exactly. Okay, so what I wanted to do was talk about um, Cynthia before I, I signed off with Real Housewives of Atlanta, and then we could talk about BGC um, some more, because I actually have more thoughts on BGC 11, to be real. Because um, I feel like I kind of like went in before I like watched a review that I wanted to talk about, and I want to talk about um, also like these black men out here that be like, that just be stealing from black women and, like, do not pay homage and do not stand up for black women. Like, um, I think it was also, like, um, like, when the woman got punched on the bus, like, you know what I mean? Like, you know, Funky Daddy even didn't say shit about it. Like, was, it was actually, like, in favor of the person uh, on the bus and that punched the, per the black woman. And I was like, damn, like, you know, it's just, like, it's like, whoa, it's like people are just fucking like sociopathic. Like people are like, oh, you hit me, I'll, I'll hit you back harder, you know? It's like if somebody attacks you or hits you or does something to you or someone is giving you the feeling of 
of violence. I'm not trying to be a fucking victim blamer um, or an apologist of violence, but I feel like in some ways, like, if, you know, someone is doing something to you and you have the power, which that man did to stop the bus and take that woman off the bus, you know what I mean? All the power he used to attack this woman physically, he could have used to just get her off the bus and away from him and away, away from passengers. And obviously, like, when he lost his job, everybody was up in arms, but that's how, like... That's how misogyny works. That's how the patriarchy works. Like men putting black men putting black women in their places is seen as like a positive thing. Like when black men abuse black women, it's seen as like on the black women to pray about and deal with on their own. It's not seen as like black men have to do anything in terms of reevaluating themselves and what the fuck they did. They was really trying to have uh, petitions and shit for this nigga to get his job back. It's like fuck out of here. It's like if you if you're in charge of a bus of of uh, if you're in charge of a bus that you got worry about all these folks lives you're gonna really put your, your life and this person's life in danger because you want to punch people in the fucking face you know what i mean it's just like no adore i didn't see the article i would appreciate it if you sent it to me or linked me that'd be awesome um let me see oh janice johnson thank you i love you too boo sweet y'all are so nice um exactly people be mad people be mad when black men have a when black men are held accountable um for acts against acts of violence against black women and it's like fucking sickening because it's like look black women go hard as fuck for black men they really do you know what i mean like i mean shit you know what i mean fuck i think for like a long time i think i was under like i think in some ways like i was excusing um, misogyny, like, from black men, especially because I didn't want to posture, um, and I, for some time, like, I thought I had privilege over black men, but I feel like in some ways, um, I feel like what made me think that was, like, my privilege of being, like, a lighter skinned person, and I feel like that was, like, very fucked up, and, like, very, like, also, like, I think just, like, ahistorical to, like, how things, like, work, you know what I mean? While, like, people will listen to me talk about things and shit like that, that doesn't mean that, like, when it comes down to it, people don't see me as, like, a black woman, you know what I mean? And that is still as, like, the bottom, you know, that's below a, bla a black man, and that's just what the fuck it is. It's not like black women, like, are wanting to be at the bottom. No, like, no one who's at the bottom is, like, no one who's a victim wants to be the victim, and I feel like that's the, the root of victim blaming, is, a, is putting the onus on the victim so that the person who needs to be accountable is never held accountable. And the person who's a victim is forever feeling like the victim, forever being silenced. And that is so abusive. Exactly. Black women are socialized to ride or die. Um, but also, black women are socialized to, you know, hold on to the negative, often negative stereotype of being the strong black woman because I feel like sometimes, like, what is the point of our strength, you know, if it's just to give it to another person, you know what I mean? Uh, like, our strength, our strength often gets scapegoated as, like, our only redeeming quality, or, like, it's often fetishized, you know? Because I know for myself, actually, mm, yeah, this is relevant, um, I know for myself, like, when I do, when I was, like, when I was doing sex work, um, I know that, like, part of the sex work that I was doing had more to do with, like, domination. Like, um, like, there were white men that would pay me to, like, beat them up. Like, that would pay me to, like, attack them. And, like, that was, like, their fantasy. Like, that's what they wanted, um, sexually, was to be attacked by a black woman. Um, and I feel like that is so powerful, like, in terms of, like, a sexuality, um, that it kind of, like, it did make me uneasy at times, but it was a way for me to get paid, so I was like, whatever. But I feel like in some ways, is like um it just really freaked me out that like part of my identity like my real life um or rather part of like I think what fucked with me was like was feeling like perhaps there were more white people who like saw me as like this angry black lady that would like punish them and I was just and it like kind of freaked me out because like that's certainly how this other person saw me and wanted to pay me for that you know wanted to pay me for how much I you know, could scare them, could hurt them. Um, and I think that, like, in some ways, like, black women, like, are constantly robbed of, like, quote-unquote femininity um, and constantly, like, told to assimilate, to be more womanly, to be more um, soft and to be more able to be cared for. But in reality, you know, 
it's us, you know, what they're saying is wrong. So like what they want is like a, an assimilation into whiteness that is often impossible and often fucking harming, you know, often harmful, you know, the things that folks do, um, especially like black women um, do to assimilate to whiteness. Um, and it's, it's just like, it's a symptom of a problem. It's not the problem, you know what I mean? Like, I think that that's the thing too. Um, black women who like, who who use like weave or makeup or, you know, anything that like folks see as non-natural, non-black, you know, notice that, you know? Um, how like things that are like normal are seen as bad and things that are like seen as white are seen as normal um, and as seen as good. Um, so I feel like when you, uh, uh, and I feel like even the word normal is rooted in, like, oppressive ass things. Um, yeah, exactly, exactly. They want us to be weak and soft, but also strong and unbreakable. It's just, like, it's impossible to be those things. It's, it's impossible, and I feel like some women, like, spend their life trying to be one or the other. Um, or rather they, or, or rather the people that, the women that assimilate into the, quote unquote idea of like submission of um of being submissive like i feel like that's 100 percent related to black men saying these things and like i've heard like black men say shit like oh i date white women because they're more submissive like they like i've had like white i've had black men straight up talk to me like that and like this is like a black man like who was interested in me who had like was like being complimentary of me and like being like really interested in me like we're talking like being maybe like kind of intimate and like just like straight up telling me like, you know, white women are just more submissive or like white women are just um, easier. And it's like shit like that made me sick, you know? Shit like that made me sick to think that like, you know, I'm, you know, just by being who I am automatically, I'm too strong or I'm too um, aggressive. And all these things that I, I don't think are bad suddenly become bad because like I'm not white and therefore I don't have the automatic uh, privilege of being fucking normal, of having my own fucking, um, oh, I'm sorry, I have to, I have to approve links. Sorry, give me one second. Um, okay, I did it. Um, I don't have the ability of, of, um, of non-suspicion, you know? I don't get believability. And that's what I was talking about with this whole Phaedra and Chuck Smith shit, too. It's like, people will really suspend their imagination to believe that Phaedra was like a bop. To believe that, like, Phaedra was like a hoe. To say these words with no fucking historical value. As if they mean anything now. It's like, fuck, like, Chuck, you got caught out. You know what I mean? My Nick was feeling fabulous. My Nick was probably feeling like that light-skinned dream. Like, like honestly, like, Mike, Mike, Mike makes me think of the type of nigga that probably told my Nick, oh, you know, you, you, you stopped me from fucking with white girls or some shit. Probably told my Nick some wild shit. Some shit like how, you know, how he fucking... Just some, probably just some like really fucking anti-black shit, honestly. And I feel like in some ways my Nick felt fucking played, because I feel like my Nick was like, wow, like my husband didn't tell me he was with these, these uh, these black ladies. What? Exactly. Bounceable, uh, bountiful Betty's. The idea that black women are too loud, it's so silencing. But if a black lady doesn't speak up, who is going to acknowledge her presence as a person? For real. For real. For real. That's the reality of it. And um, and I think that, like, this show, as we've all acknowledged, like, you don't really see black women, like, living, like, a fabulous-ass life, just living carefree. Actually, fuck, y'all. I meant to talk about fucking Cynthia. Black men really don't be here for us. But I did want to talk about um, Cynthia and Peter. Now look, pause. Last time, or rather last season, I feel like they got married. Maybe, and maybe I'm wrong. Um, maybe it was two seasons ago. Um, but I feel like ever since then, I just feel like Cynthia has been just like running themselves fucking ragged. And it's really bugging me out that like Peter really said that he wants to have a man cave. And that like 
that should be just that. It's like, what's the point of having a conversation, Peter, if you just think you're entitled to have a space away from the home? And then I also want to say that I feel like in some ways, I think that people living together can be very complicated. I think that you can love somebody to death, but I think that loving with them is not always what the fuck is good for your ass. You know what I mean? And I think sometimes, like, taking breaks is good. I don't think that's bad. I used to be very, like anti-breaks. I used to be like not into people taking breaks, but I feel like sometimes you take a break and you realize that like you want to be with somebody, you know, even stronger than before. You realize that that wasn't right for you. But I don't think that like, you know, I don't, I don't like breakup culture in terms of like, oh, we're never going to speak again or like I drop off the face of the earth, especially if like we've been together and we care about each other. Um, but I think, I think calling it a man cave is <laughs> fucked up. Um, I think that, like, he could just, like, finish the basement or something. But, I mean, honestly, I feel like having space away from, uh, having space away from Cynthia is real. I don't know. I don't think it's, I don't think it's bad. Mmm. It's true, Queen. It's true. I mean, like, I've definitely, like, I've experienced a lot of situations where, you know, black men will just say, like, the most off-the-wall ass fucking racist shit. And I feel like it's 100% to be, like, more closer to white folks. And it makes me really sad. Um, I remember, in particularly, um, I had a friend, and I asked them straight up. I was like... I said, so I don't know what, no, I didn't ask them anything. They said straight up to me that they had never experienced racism. And this was like a dark skinned black person um, who was like, who was like extremely fat. And I was just like, you're lying. You know what I mean? Like, I was like, you're lying. You know what I mean? And they were like, they like paused and then like literally for the next hour just told me mad accounts. And I was like, I just, I paused and I said straight up, I was like, you know what, the thing that sucks about all of this is like for some reason you felt like when you were in the company of another black person, like, and not saying that I don't have privilege in this space, but the fact that I could be like talking about racism and that they could straight up lie and say that they never experienced racism, like in their face racism. And that like I could just like be like, nah. And that like they could just, that I could like barely challenge that, like barely challenge it. Just be like, no, I just, I just rejected it. And then they just came out like with all this stuff. And then I was just like, you know what sucks? It's like, they're like, who are you protecting? Who are the white folks you want to be around so bad that you couldn't say that, you know? Because you got to think about it like that too. Because we don't want to be shaming black folks for not feeling like they could talk about, you know, the realities. Um... You know, and this is a black person who had been raised by two black women, you know what I mean? Who seemingly had, quote unquote, reverence and care for black women. But I just noticed that that wasn't the case. Like, black men really do get indoctrinated with hate for black women. Like, I feel like some people say, oh, well, if he loves his mom, you know, that's a sign to know if he's a good man. But that's not true. Because some of these black men will love their fucking mama, but they will look at another black woman and be like, uh, you know, just not into it. And just be straight up hating. So, uh, yeah, I think, I think, like, black men are constantly trying to get white male power, and because white men are constantly trying to fuck white women, or ambiguously uh, racial-looking women, because we can't act like, like white men don't try to dominate other women of color. However, I feel like the way that white men try to dominate black women is a way that black men don't try to dominate black women. I feel like the black, the white men that date, the white men that try to dominate black women, and I'm not saying date, I'm saying dominate. I'm saying are constantly, you know, talking about how, like, they're usually like hippie-ass white dudes talking about how, how, they, how they come from the earth and they found a woman who's brown like the earth or some bullshit like that. Um, and, they'll, and they'll think of themselves as, like, father earth or some shit like that. And I feel like black men do some shit like that, too, in terms of, like, niggas with onk shit. But that shit is, like, fucking historically fucked up. You know what I mean? Like, white dudes will just create some shit to say about black women that they want to carry on. Mmm... I think that, like, I think that there's definitely a status involved with having a white partner, for sure. Um, I think, like, you know, and I think that it's it's something that, like, if you're not, like, if you're not aware of can be, like, you know, 
I think like some I think like the thing is I find I don't know now look this this is something I find I find that like a lot of times um you know black women who date like white dudes they will ride or die for their white dudes like they will fucking be like all these white dudes out here fuck them but not Tommy you know what I mean <laughs> or they be like not Jim like, but not but James they're like James me and James you know we're solid but like every other white person and I mean that's real but I feel like at the same time like I feel like in some ways um uh no, Saniha, any man who disses black women is automatically a nigga you wouldn't want to fuck with. But the fact of the matter is, a lot of times, if you're a light skin or a white passing or even like ambiguously racial, meaning you don't look quote unquote black, as fucked up as that sounds, that's a reality. If you don't quote unquote look black or you're not visibly black or people have to ask you what you're fucking, um, what, what you are as fucking alienating and as fucked up as that is, um, those folks don't realize, um, right away that, like, um, those niggas is grimy because they're too caught up in perhaps not wanting to be black or not wanting to ID as black. So there are a lot of, like, a lot of these black dudes out here that do that shit, they'll be, like, going in, but they'll be in safety of, uh, perhaps a racist ass Latinat person or a white passing black person. You feel me? It'll be like they'll be protected by that privilege. But I do agree. Oh yeah, no, Dark Girls is terrible. It's bad. It's bad. It's not good. Um, I almost choked on my can. Woman from the earth, bro. Dad, right? <laughs> Victoria, for real. Ah. Those niggas with onks and dark girls are working my nerves. No, I agree. Listen, like, that shit, and the thing that fucks me up is, like, I can't lie to you, like, um, I don't know. Like, I don't know if this is even worth talking about, because it's just, like, I think in some ways, like, I gotta be real. In some ways, like, I do experience, um, perhaps shadiness. In some situations, like when I'm around niggas with onks, because I feel like they go out of their way to try to shade me because I'm light skinned and I'm just like, fuck out of here. Like, I don't fuck with you no matter what, but the fact that you're trying to like make me feel bad, like, they'll be trying to talk about light skinned folks and like light skinned folks aren't black, and they'll be like brown skinned folks, and I'll just be like, okay, like, you know, obviously that's not true. Obviously, that shit that fucking is polarizing, but I, it just like, it's just like um I'll get like I'll get kind of salty like I can't lie whenever like niggas with onks come around because like I notice that like they fetishize like dark skinned women in a way that's like very like it's like violent as fuck and it's creepy as fuck like like one case in, in particular me and my my roommate like my roommate is like she's like uh excuse me they are more like uh dark skin uh I would say that they're like. Mm, I would say they're brown skin. Like, I would say they're, like, a darker brown skin person. Um, and we went out to our neighbor's house. And our neighbors, one of them is, like, a, a little darker than me. And then their sister is dark skin. And, um, you know, there's the sister that's darker, that's, like, the same side, of the like, the same color as me almost, was, like, oh, like... Like, like, she always be thinking that we we both, like, look like Beyonce. Like, it's kind of funny. Like, I'll wear, like, a, a blonde wig, and then Dottie will be like, oh, my God, I had the same wig. And she shows me pictures of her, like, when she used to be a little heavier. And that's another thing. Pause. I'm sorry. But, like, don't you fucking hate when someone who used to be a little heavier, a.k.a. their little size 16 ass, want to come and talk about how they used to be fat? I hate y'all used to be fat ass people. Go away. Y'all are the worst. You used to be fat ass niggas don't got shit on me. And they and notice, they used to be fat in like fifth grade. They used to be fat like when, who cares? You know what I mean? They Or rather like, they used to be like, chubby or not averagely motherfucking shaped and shit um but oh hold on hold on Blah. exactly exactly adora exactly exactly they like a certain type of black woman they like big booty afro dark skin um but the thing is my my roommate was dark skin 
Um, but like have like these long like uh, I like I I'm gonna I'm gonna take credit for this Jody I love you, but like um Jody wanted some Sangalese twists and I did them like extra long okay, um but um I I like the, I started doing them and then they were like oh I want to finish them I'm like okay. So, you know, they had on these, like, they had these extra long Marley twists and shit in uh, with Senegalese. And it was looking sick. It was looking, like, natural as fuck. Because, like, they had a little bit of their hair out. Like, they didn't do it, like, so tight. So, it looked, like, natural. It looked like like it was, like, kind of like dreads, honestly. They looked like some good, nice-ass long dreads. And so, when we went into the when we went into the house, this nigga with onks, that ass was like, Oh, I seen you the other day. We was talking. And then my roommate was like, Nigga, that nigga was yelling at me while I was riding my bike. And like this is a niggas with unks. So like right away I'm already creeped out because I'm like, uh, you thought you was talking to somebody when you was yelling at them from across the street, fam? That's not cute. And then like the whole time, like just like grilling and then trying to make us watch these like awkward ass Farrakhan videos that were like not even Farrakhan, because I kind of fuck with Farrakhan a little bit. Like I don't really, really, really fuck with Farrakhan, but some of the shit he be saying I fuck with. Um but it was some fucking uh, get back to Kemet ass shit, and I was just not with it, um, and I wasn't here for it. And then fucking, um, you know, he was just like creeping and looking, and you know, trying to arrange like hangout sessions, and like people was not interested, you know. And I just thought that that was like a really creepy situation. I really didn't like it. Um, but fuck y'all, I keep getting off topic. Pause. Exactly, Victoria. I feel like they don't think of they they talk about how black women are queens, but I think that that means like when when they decided you are a queen, because just as they can call you a banshee or a loud ghetto trash blah blah blah, they can call you a fucking queen. So I feel like honestly, like when they're like shaking my hand and kissing my hand, talking about peace queen and shit like that, it makes me sick because I know that they don't really think I'm a queen. They think I'm a queen right now because I'm submitting to them. It's conditional as fuck. Anybody that anybody that rolls up on you and automatically genders you as fucking royalty, automatically places you second to themselves because they think they kings, you feel me? Fuck out of here. Not with it. But it's just not for me. Not for me at all. But, um, hold on, I must, I must powder my nose, you know, I don't mean to be rude, I must powder my nose. But, um, I want to talk about Cynthia, and y'all not going to stop me from talking about Sister Cynthia. Cynthia. And we're already one fucking hour into this shit. Y'all. Okay, so finishing up with Cynthia. How the fuck Cynthia's sister going to tell Cynthia... After being in Cynthia house, that she's staying for two fucking months. What ki what kind of life? And they got the nerve to be in the bead store talking about you changed. I know you love me, but you changed, bitch. You changed too. <laughs> you thought you could stay at my house for two months? Like no team. Like I, like I got two brothers. I love them to death. They could not stay with me for two months. Uh uh. No. Uh-uh. Two days. Two days. Maybe two weeks. Maybe two weeks. But two months? Bitch. Uh-uh. I was like, Melly, Mel, sit down. But that, that shit bothered me. But I thought it was interesting that, like, Mel was trying to get, was trying to talk shit about Peter for, um, having a car, for buying a new car. And, um, Queen Sertel, thank you. Uh, for, for buying a car, like, I'm just like, look, I feel like they always struggle with money and it's kind of awkward for us to, for us to be in their business, but I'm like, god damn, you know, like, god damn, I don't know, it just seems like so wild, I'm just like, damn, like, this nigga's just out here, you know, like, Peter's just out here buying new cars, talking about how he want to buy a new place to live, and I was just like, that seems kind of drastic. As much as I do feel like Peter should have the ability to have a place of his own, as should Cynthia, I feel like the way he brought it up was kind of like... But at the same time, Cynthia, if you, if you letting your sister... If you letting your sister stay for two months, 
then like I kind of don't want to hear it because I like I kind of am just like uh 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 because th it's not like this nigga was like oh let me get a bat cave or a man cave out of nowhere like two months is just like two months two months is not little two months is not little two months is a long time that's mad dinners like bitch what do you what do you like that that you know two months means what do you like to eat. You know what I mean? And so I do feel like Cynthia is a pushover too, but I feel like Cynthia be getting brolic at like the at the times when they need to get brolic. But at the same time, I feel like that that um Noel shit kind of side side like blindsided her, and I feel like Nini's acting up. So now I feel like she don't feel like she got a homie right now. And you know who else do really Cynthia really fucks with? You know what I mean? Really, Queen. He did bring it up like he was getting sick of living with her. But it made me sad. Also, oh, pause, pause, pause. It also made me really fucking sad that, like, these women were talking about having sex with their husbands and were just like, sometimes I don't want to, but, like, you have to. And it's like, no, you fucking don't. Like, I don't, like, and I feel like that's that's the other, I think that's the, the other part of marriage that disgusts me. Because I feel like a, a lot of marriage, the idea of marriage disgusts me. The idea that, like, I'm supposed to wear a white gown. It's all based on innocence. It's based off of this idea of a virgin being passed along, handed from her father to another man's arms. It's so paternalistic. It's fucking disgusting, honestly. No shade to y'all who are married. No shade to y'all who are married. But, like, I I think that it makes me actually physically sick that like people like think like this that people that this is being passed down as a thought process that like you know you just gotta be always down to fuck ew you know that sickens me um it, it, it yo get, yo getting married is creepy to me too yo i think it's mad creepy that like you know um that like you you have to give up your autonomy for this nigga for this nigga's nut. Fuck out of here, bitch. Like, I don't know, dude. Like, seriously. Like, I be sitting here like, how the fuck, like, yeah, for a marriage is a man's business. Yes, bitch. For real, it is. It's just a way to fucking cage a bitch. Honestly, it really is. Like, a lot, nine times out of ten, it's a way for somebody to make sure that you don't fuck with their money. You know what I mean? Marriage is a way for people to make sure that you don't fuck with their money. Um, or, or you make sure, or they make sure that they get something for fucking with your ass. I feel like that. Like, honestly, I feel like y'all could date. You know what I mean? And that's what I think. There's so much stigma on dating. You know what I mean? That, that these 13 year olds chilling and shit. But like people just like really hammer in marriage so hard. They hammer in you ha getting a ring so much. It just makes me really sad that like you, you know, you get this ring. It's supposed to be such a big deal. But it's like, damn, all these bitches be looking miserable. They be, it's just like, fuck. It just seems like a leash. You know what I mean? On these fucking whack niggas. You know, Apollo over here talking about, I could have fucked Kenya if I wanted to. Like, how basic are you? Like, how? How basic are you? You know what I mean? It's just like, damn. Like, you clearly... Like, Apollo, you are married to Team Phaedra. You do not fuck around and talk about you could have been playing for Team Kenya. It don't make no sense. It's like, that's what I think marriage is. Marriage is like these little teams of folks, and they do things, perhaps, and they have children or whatever, and it's just it just seems so dreadful. It just seems so, like, just not what I'm interested in. But I think it's also really interesting how folks get married and they feel like, you know, that, that matters, that means something, that means something about that person, you know, people get married and they feel like it's a status, they wear those rings, they, they have those, that, that album on Facebook, they're, they're our wedding, they think that that means something, you know what I mean, I think that that's like also interesting, it's like very phenomenal that like, and I feel like younger and younger folks are getting married, because it supposedly means something, but it really don't, and that's why people wonder why divorce go has gone up, because niggas ain't, niggas ain't tied down like they were before, at this point in time, you could get married and dip out real quick, you know what I mean, especially if you broke, and broke folks is getting divorced like a mug, rich people too, but it's like, divorces really don't cost that much if you don't have that much shit, if y'all really don't have a lot of sh liquid it, a lot of uh, shit together y'all are good y'all could go on judge judy or, or divorce court or some shit like that and get your shit settled out in 30 minutes like it's really not that serious 
Um, and no, I feel you. I would only get married for the benefits as well. Like, I'll get married to a friend to get some coins, um, and get some fucking, you know, benefits off them. You know, hopefully the person I fuck up, I, I fucking hook up with, they got some, like, good insurance or something so I can get my teeth, you know, done. Because, child, let me tell you, I like my teeth, but I am noticing that, like, you know, I would like to get veneers. I'm not going to lie. Like, I am... I'm not going to say that I'm not pro, like, do what you want to do with your body because I super am. I don't believe in, like, uh, telling folks, like, not to get surgeries and not to, like, get shit done that they want to get done because I feel like that's, like, not, that's another form of body policing. But I would get some fucking veneers in a second, bitch. I would not get the Hillary Duffs, though. No, ma'am. Yes, why is marriage the face of, uh, exactly, but doesn't that tell you something, though? Doesn't that tell you something? Marriage being the face of the LGBTQ rights, um, and, um, fucking, uh, whatchamacallit, um, LGBTQ folks and extremely white cis men and women just getting married. Just getting married and just, just being white and gay and being married. Just a shame. Those engagement photos kill me, right? Yo, I be dead. Look, and it's like not hate. Like, I'm happy. I'm happy if you happy, bitch. But I be like, yo. And also, and also, I think another thing that, that bugs me out is like, um, you know, one of, I think like, a, like recently I, I felt kind of like, you know, like fat, fat phobia, like extremely. Because like someone that, like, I was kind of close to, like, lost a lot of weight, and I just felt like, you know, I felt extremely, like, alienated at the time, because I felt like, it was weird, because, like, there, we are very similar in looks, so I felt very strange about it, because I felt like, looking at them, I felt like I completely could see what my thin self would be, and it, like, really just made me, like, just physically, like, sick honestly to think about like the to think about like no longer being like the size I am and like being that small and like just like all of the things that come with that shit because like you know this is again a person that was close to me and I just noticed that you know I saw um a lot of people who were just like so um you know so like happy for this person they were like and the thing is like this is a person that's still like quote unquote fat so it's like you know at the same time as like thin as they are they're still fat and like it's like you know it just like totally warped my mind um because like I am extremely comfortable in my body like there have been times where I like I could see physically myself losing weight and it made me uneasy because I'm extremely comfortable in my body and like for my body to change I feel like for my body to change at, with anything would, would definitely you know be like an adjustment I feel like that's anybody but I think especially like for me being a fat person um losing weight um it really does trigger me in a, a big way because like I've just become so comfortable with being a fat bitch that it's like I don't know, like, and even, again, even losing weight, like, and being a lesser fat bitch, it bothers me, because it's just, like, I'm comfy, like, I don't hate me, I don't hate what I see, and I think, like, losing weight, like, just, like, freaks me out, like, just, like, point blank, like, that's just how I feel, um, I feel like everybody got kicked out, hello, aww, I got little dolphin teeth. You're so cute. Aw, I'm sorry that things kind of got cut off, but it, it is recorded. So, hooray, you didn't miss anything. That's exciting. Um, let me see. Um, but yeah, so, um, I was actually gonna dip and go make a sandwich because I'm actually, like, low-key starving. But, um, I will talk to you guys soon. I love you. Um, peace, love, and blessings. Bye.